Could the probability of quantum mechanics be caused because we have no fundamental understanding of time? Modern physics cannot explain the continuous forward momentum of time. Newton believed time existed as a thing in itself, and Einstein believed that there was something missing from quantum mechanics. In quantum atom theory, the individual atoms are creating their own time by the emission and absorption of electromagnetic radiation. When there is a photon-electron coupling, two-dimensional space on the surface of an atom expands into three-dimensional space-time. Even the individual atoms of the observer are creating their own space-time geometry. If we look up at the stars, we can see back in time through light years of space. The farther we look, the further we see back in time. The position of the observer within the universe makes no difference. Whatever planet or galaxy we observe from, we will see the universe expanding and be able to see back in time, in all directions. This process of looking back in time can be put in reverse, and the closer we look at an object, the less time can elapse. The light from the sun takes just over 8 minutes to reach us, and moonlight takes 1.28 seconds, and the light from everyday objects must take only a fraction of a second. There must be a limit to how high we can magnify an object and still have a process of time. When we look down into an atom, we can only see the probability of the uncertainty principle. This is because the process of time is created by a photon-electron coupling that expands as a quantum wave particle function, as an inverse volume of space in the form of a light sphere of quantized wave fronts, creating the forward motion of time. Time is inverse, just like addition and subtraction, or multiplication and division. When an atom emits a photon, or quantum of energy, we have addition, and when another atom absorbs that quantum of energy, we have subtraction. Therefore time has a strange property for the observer of always being added to, but never being accounted for. Because this process is happening in three-dimensional space, it is more like multiplication and division, but the end result is the same. Time moves on, and the observer remains in the moment of now. If modern physics has no understanding of time, it certainly has no understanding of the moment of now. In quantum atom theory, at the quantum level of the atoms, the moment of now is created by a single photon-electron coupling, creating a wave function of future possibilities. On the level of everyday objects, the observer will see the multiplication of photon-electron couplings, creating a temporary image of the universe moment by moment. We therefore have a sea of electromagnetic radiation, creating a blank canvas for the observer that he or she can participate in. This is what Socrates called a sea of beauty. The only way to see this happen directly with light is in the two-slit experiment. When the wave function reaches the screen with the two slits, the photon will react with the electrons of the screen. This will collapse the wave particle duality of the light, creating new quantum particles in space and new moments in time. The part of the wave that does not come in contact with the screen will expand in all possible routes, going through both slits as two light spheres of quantized wave fronts. Constructive and destructive interference between the waves will cause them to superimpose or cancel each other out. When this wave particle function comes in contact with the screen, it will collapse, creating moments in time and quantum particles in the shape of an interference pattern. When the observer turns on a detector to determine which slit a photon passes through, the interference pattern collapses. This is because to observe a photon we have to create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing each wave front into a quantum particle that will have its own position in space and time. If we turn the detector off, we remove the photon-electron coupling, and in time the interference pattern will reform. Just like in Newton's first law of motion, the interference pattern will continue to maintain its state unless acted upon by an external force. In this theory there is no universal time and everything is relative. Because the individual atoms create their own space-time geometry, 
Therefore, the observer is the only true reference frame. This is very difficult to visualize, but this oil painting of a geisha girl walking through sunlight, the wave particle duality of light will collapse as she walks through the rays of light. She will collapse the wave function into moments of time and space, creating her own space-time. We have entanglement because the polarization will be set at the creation of each expanding wave front. The wave front will expand in the form of a light sphere, and the polarization will remain the same for the entire surface of the light sphere, no matter how large it becomes. Because each atom is creating its own space-time at the same rate that light moves, the expansion of light between the atoms will always be a universal constant, independent of the motion of the source. This can explain why light is so beautiful when it strikes an object. It is because we are looking at a moment of pure creation of time and space. When the wave fronts of two spheres comes in contact, we will have destructive interference and the wave fronts out of phase will cancel each other out. There will also be constructive interference between the wave fronts that are in phase and they will superimpose. The radi radiating energy will be entirely absorbed proportionally to the masses within the objects. This will cause an unbalanced force and the two objects will resonate together in a process known as gravity. Because atoms consist mostly of empty space, electromagnetic radiation of short wavelengths, like X-rays, can penetrate the object and therefore every single part of matter can take part in the gravitational interaction. We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius. Thus the strength of the gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. Therefore we have a universal dynamically evolving geometry of time in the form of ever expanding spherical quantized wave fronts. The observer will feel this as the forward momentum of time and will see patterns of a beautiful symmetry not just because of their mathematical position in space, but it is also because of their sequence in time. The atoms will distort the geometry of time, creating mathematical patterns of every conceivable shape. The same basic method of pattern formation, the same mechanism of symmetry breaking, governs the whole universe of organic and non-organic matter. Everything will form into ever greater complexity, because everything is creating its own space-time geometry of ever greater diversity. Only a slight distortion in the space-time symmetry will spiral out, creating the visual patterns of our universe. It is easy to see how, how our infinite sequence of whole numbers can represent the infinity of three-dimensional space, because the numbers can be used to represent three-dimensional shapes but it is the irrational numbers that drop out of the whole number sequence that represent the never-ending expansion of time. In quantum atom theory, the irrational number pi is a physical constant and represents the expanding curvature of space-time. It is not just because it is random and carries on expanding forever. Its position within the whole number system points towards its link with the forward momentum of time. In quantum physics, it takes three quantum numbers to calculate the wave function as it expands as an inverse volume of space in the form of a light sphere. The decimal expansion of pi starts at the number three and goes to infinity, representing three-dimensional space-time. Therefore, Einstein was right. Something is missing from quantum mechanics. And Newton was right. Time is a thing in itself. Time is an innate property of matter, whatever form or shape it takes.